Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a review on Kalari, which is a hero of the new MOBA Paragon. Yeah, I just got it uh, a couple days ago, like two or three. And so far, I'm loving the shit out of this game. Uh, I've been using Kalari as my main hero. She is amazing. I'm already Master E5 with her. Don't have her skins yet because I don't have enough, uh, what they call, rep reputation? Reputation. Or coins. Um, anyways, let's get started. This is her, this is her abilities. Her passive is marked for death. Kalorian teammates gain vision of any enemy below 25% of max health. This is extremely useful for you and all your teammates. If someone's low, you can go ahead, go over to the other side of the map, and kill Steel. <laughs> People sure love getting mad about kill Steel. Um, her left mouse click is her basic attack slash, pretty much. She does basic attack at level 1, she does 34.9. I don't know why they have the decimals. Anyway, she does physical damage, and she has three, put three levels on this ability. Um... And it gets higher every time. I forget what the stats are, but I'll look into that later. It's not a really good review. Her right click is a backflip, which you can use twice. You can flip in the air two times, and the, uh, what it doesn't say is you can actually backflip in the direction you're moving. So you can backflip forward, and then you can backflip backwards. And yeah, you can actually have a lot of control with this backflip. Her Q is Shadow Walk, aka the Loki Disappearance. Uh, this skill is not as useful as I thought, but it's actually pretty useful. Um, the fact that she goes invisible, uh, she gains a lot of movement speed. Not as much as the actual sprint in the game, but she gains movement speed. Plus, what it also doesn't say... Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. You can also see the enemy Kalari when she's invisible when you are in Shadow Walk. Just remember that. And you are able to see if you're in, if you're below 25% health if they have a Kalari. Yeah. Also, this it resets if you kill someone, which is awesome. But by it resetting, it's a little different in this game. It actually resets to one second, so it is an instant effect. So you actually have to wait one second after you kill someone, which in game is a lot of time. It wouldn't doesn't seem like a lot of time, but it's a lot of time. Her E is Blood Dagger, probably her second best ability that she has, because it's probably her main damage, other than Death Sentence, which we'll get into later. Uh, she throws a dagger, which has a really long range, most in other skills, which deals 120 physical damage and also applies a bleed, a dot damage. Uh, which doesn't really do that much. I wish they increased it a little more. It just does 1% of the target's damage. That's not... And it's over 5 seconds. That's just not a lot of damage at all. In the beginning of the game, it does 1 one damage. Like, 1 health tick. And that's it. It's stupid. They should really increase that. Nigger. Um, and her ultimate, her R, is Death Sentence. Which is probably my favorite ultimate in the game, actually. It's just so satisfying. Um, she dashes in a line, passing through enemies, dealing 400 physical damage. She also penetrates physical armor if the targets are marked for death. And if they're marked for death, that's um, her passive. They're below 25% health. And, and, yeah, ignores defense. Um, I love this ability because it's pretty much a Thanatos ult. Thanatos ult but you, it's in a straight line. And you can get like a multiple people, unlike Loki, who only has to go after one. <laughs> uh, anyways, those are our skills. One thing to note though, you can't actually upgrade every single skill to the max. So what I suggest is you max out Blood Dagger. Or you do Death Sentence whenever you can, but max out Blood Dagger. Then you max out your Slash as much as possible and backflip max that out as well 
Shadow Walk, you don't need to max this out. All it does is decrease the cool, cooldown time. But it's not really that big of a difference, which is why I won't do it. It also increases the mana it takes. Um, backflip is a much more useful ability to escape, which is why I want, which is why you want to max that one out first. And yeah, anyways, let's go to the deck that I made for her. Hmm, for her primary helix, I got the Warlord. Pretty basic. Every single physical damage uses it. Pretty much gives you an aura, makes your minions do more damage, which is useless. Useless with the Kalari, since you'll be in the jungle most of the time. Uh, then I got Amulet of the Veteran. This is more of a mid game item. It's not really an order, but it's this is the mid game item. Uh, this is gonna provide some defense along with some attack power, but mostly for there for the defense. Wind Corver Blade. You're gonna. This is a very essential item in this build, which gives you. Physical damage and attack speed. This combine. I think this is. Yeah, this is the first item I get. And then I combine that with upgrades. I'll talk about that later. Anyways, Harvester Key. You get in the beginning game. Every single person. Harvesting, mana, and health. Those are your starter items, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, the Admin Key. Just, again, more health and damage. Brawler's War. This is. Situational. This is probably your, gonna be your second item. If no one else is buying wards or bought a ward, you don't actually buy most wards. Uh, Cronus's spike. This will give you cooldown reduction, which is and mana, physical damage, but mostly for the cooldown reduction. This is what you want. Two Cronus's spikes. I just put it there just in case I get rid of one, because you have to discard in order to get a new one to get different upgrades. And Porter Stone, this is sort of a mid game, late game item. Uh, it's, eh, I just put it in there. I don't even know why it's in there. As for upgrades, we got health, a lot of health, three cost health. We got two Chronos, which is gonna give me no three three Chronoses, which only cost two, and they're gonna give me fifteen percent cooldown. Plus the Chronos' Spike, which is another 5, so it should be 25 in total. Uh, penetration, I don't even have Penetration items, I don't know why that's in there. Uh, attack Speed, you're going to combine that with the Wind Carver Blade. Mana, blah blah blah, health. Lesser health, I don't... I, th the, I don't remember using this, I think this is... I put that in there because I always end up with like one extra point that I can't use so I put that in there major strike this is what you want a lot of which I'm probably gonna put one more in there since I got rid of the other one major strike and you're gonna need a lot of these because you're gonna this is your main source of your physical damage these upgrades are amazing two strikes in case you want to or no three strikes this is for early game when you when you want to upgrade uh, one item to the max really fast. You can use these strikes and mana, blah blah blah. Standard. <sighs> that is your build, guys. Pretty much full power, a little bit of attack speed, and some cooldown reduction. Pretty basic. You just want to build her like a Loki plus Thanatos at the same time. They have the same, same build. But you can switch things around. You can switch things like uh, the amulet. Which gives you max health. You don't really need to go with that tanky, but it trust me, the health really helps. So, anyways, that concludes my Kalari review slash walkthrough overview. Uh, and if you ever play Paragon, go ahead and add me. That's my username, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.